This right here, the node tree. One of the big apprehensions I had when I wanted to learn Resolve, why does it look overly complicated? And that's a very straightforward one. Where do I start with editing this? That's the goal of this video, is to explain this to you in the most straightforward way possible that made the most sense to me. If you're wanting to learn Resolve, you have apprehensions, there's never a good time to learn a new piece of editing software. You're always between multiple projects. And that held me back for the longest time, so I'm trying to help you make the jump. We'll start with the node tree and then we'll get into one of the other big problems people face, which is when they export things in Resolve, they look at their export and it doesn't look the same as what they're editing. I'll tell you how to fix that. I also wanna show you a really easy way just to color in Resolve. If you wanna cut in Final Cut, export to Resolve, it's super easy to do, I'll show you that. And also Power Windows, a ridiculously quick and easy way to make your footage look so much better and it's so easy to do as well. Let's get into the node tree. Now, each one of these is a corresponding clip from my cut page here. So you see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clips. And if we go in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each one of these is just referring to these individually. You're not editing everything as one big timeline. This up here is what you call your node tree. Now, you'll see that these ones I haven't made any changes to, but this one right here, it has that dreaded node tree that when you look at it for the first time, doesn't make any sense. So this will be a little bit of an easier way for you to understand the node tree, this thing right here. This is what it looks like with my hand-drawn diagram. Two important ones to take note of here. This is your input and this is your output. The important thing to note here is that your output right here is essentially what you see, what everyone else is going to see. And we'll touch more on that and this after. These are very important. You mess up these and you'll mess up your color completely. This is a very straightforward, clean node tree, but you see all kinds of crazy ones online and they can get very, very complicated. But let's dumb it down so you understand it and then you can kind of understand the more complicated ones a little bit easier. Easier way to show you what this, everything that's going on here is to use an analogy. Think of your node tree as if it were, uh, node tree is a river and the river only flows one way and that is downstream. This is the way rivers will work. You still have your input, and your output node. And we're gonna use these little stickies here as our nodes to explain things. Basically, any change you make upstream here is gonna have a direct effect all the way downstream. So let's change our white balance. We've got a little node there. Let's add in some connecting things so it all makes a bit more sense in relation to a node tree. Let's say we warm up the white balance here. That's gonna warm the color of the river all the way downstream. If we add in our exposure now and we brighten up the color of that river, it's gonna make everything downstream a little bit brighter. Now, why wouldn't you have all of your changes on one node? You definitely can. And to be honest with you, it's probably a mistake you'll have to start trying to avoid doing when you start playing around in the node tree, because it's very easy just to play about with changes and forget to click on a different node before you make the changes. But if you do it this way, and you can, the problem is when you wanna to start to see what the changes look like before and after those changes you made on say the exposure, because like, where is it? You can't see it easily now, right? It's, it's here somewhere, but you have gotta find it. That's why it's easier just to have things on their own individual nodes. It's much easier to enable and disable a node individually instead of having them all stacked on top of each other. So I want to see what everything looks like minus the exposure adjustments that I made on the node here. So I disable that node, now I can see everything. Actually I like it back with, I can enable it again. Or oh, I'm not liking the color change that I made there on the whole scene, I'll disable it. Actually you know, it's good. So you have everything separate and it just makes everything a lot easier. Everything flows downstream. Think of your node tree like a river. When you think of it like that, makes a lot more sense. Right, so now we know basically what our node tree is doing, we can talk a little bit more about the input and the output. So if we click on our input here, you'll see we've got a color space transform here. What this is doing is basically taking our Sony log footage, we're gonna be referring to Sony throughout this video because it's what I shoot with, our Sony log footage, we need to transform that log footage into something that you're able to edit with 
within Resolve's powerful array of tools that it has at our disposal. So we need to create a node tree here. So we've got our basic one here, which we're gonna call our input. We're gonna right click and label it input. It is easy to label them so you know what you're clicking on. You don't have to, this is just my preference. You will develop your own way of doing this. Right click, we're only gonna add a couple for this, add serial, and we're only gonna be talking about serials. There's a bunch of other ones here which we can cover in another video, but that gets very complicated. Uh, let's just do one more, add a node, add serial, and we're gonna call this our output. And we're gonna do one here, we're gonna call our white balance, WB, and then we're gonna call another one, our exposure X, expo. Let's clean this up a bit. So for our input, we need to do a color space transform from our S-Log3 footage to something DaVinci can understand so we can edit with it. So up here you can search transform. So color space transform, we're gonna drag that onto here and then we're gonna click on this one and we're gonna do the same and add it onto there. So right here, input color space, depending on the camera you use, it probably has it in here. Sony S-Log3 is Sony S-Log Gamma 3.Cine, if you're shooting the right way. Input Gamma is going to be Sony S-Log 3. You immediately see we've got a little change has happened there. Output Color Space, DaVinci Wide Gamut, and then DaVinci Intermediate. Now we need to go to our output. Basically, we need to now go from DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate to Rec. 709 that you can then view. So let's go DaVinci Wide Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate, and then here is where we need to do Rec. 709, but if you use a Mac, you need to change your output gamma to Rec. 709A. If you wanna know more about why to do this, search a video, I'm not gonna explain it in this. It can get complicated and it doesn't necessarily need to be, but I'm probably not the best person to explain it. Just know you need to change it to Rec. 709A. If you ever see color shifts between what you've exported and what you saw, it's probably because you've selected Rec. 709 opposed to Rec. 709A. That right there is basically your input, your output, and now you can make all your changes within here. So if we wanna shift our white balance around and make it, I don't know, a bit cooler, and now we wanna bring up the exposure there, we can click on exposure, and that's a big tip as I referenced earlier in the diagram, the top-down one. Make sure you click on your uh, your node before you make any of those changes. If you don't click on it, you're just gonna be applying everything to the one thing and the one node and it gets very complicated. We also referenced earlier how you can disable and enable nodes quickly to see what the changes look like with that node enabled or with it disabled. Very quickly and easily to do, Command and D. You see there? Enabled, disabled, enabled, disabled. The exposure adjustment there, disabled, enabled. And if you have uh, one of these, you can just tap the button too. This is a really nice way to color. We'll leave it for another video. When I first started using Resolve and the node tree, I immediately thought this is gonna take forever. I have to do all these little nodes each time on each clip. You don't have to. You can copy and paste grades across. You can create a power grade. I'll show you quickly how we can copy and paste something across. So what you can do if you wanna quickly copy and paste a grade from here to here, you can just click on this clip and then click on Command, click on this right here, go right click, and then you can go Apply Grade and it'll take that node tree from here and apply it to that other clip. That's a really quick and easy way to just apply the grade from one thing to another. Let's say you wanna create a node tree template that you can use for each different camera that you use. So it's just, it looks like this, but for specifically the cameras that you use on a regular basis. Very easy to do, and this is called a power grade. What you do is go over here, tick on this box right here, and you see I've already got a couple in here. This one's actually empty. Click on power grade one, and then find what you want to copy the node tree structure from. So let's just say this one right here. I can go above my preview here, right click, go grab still, and it'll literally add that in as a power grade there. So now I can just find one of these unedited clips and I can click on that, I can double click on the power grade and it will just apply that same node tree structure to that very quickly and easily. You can do that once for each camera you use and it's just a quick way to get power grades. So that's called a power grade. It's powerful, it's fast. We're gonna do more videos on color grading. Dana also has a whole array of videos that you should go and watch on how to nail in individual settings in here. But if you're just wanting your basic node tree structure and layout, that is it there. As I said, it does not need to be complicated.
we referenced it already, but there's a common problem people face when they're editing in Resolve, even Premiere. When they export their video, it doesn't look the same. There's a gamma shift, color change, it's darker, it's brighter. Whatever you wanna call it, it does not look the same. And it's just a simple set of settings that you need to make sure are correct. There's one that you need to set within DaVinci if you're using specifically a Mac. It's normally the Macs that are the problem. Change this setting in your Mac first, and then there's a project setting that you need to make sure is correct every single time you edit a project. Let's do the one in Resolve first that you can set once and forget about because it sets it as a uh, uh, default. So for this one, go DaVinci Resolve Preferences and come down to where it says General. Right here, you see this one? Use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewers. Make sure that is ticked. If you don't have that ticked, things are gonna look all kinds of funky. Tick that box if you use a Mac, MacBook, Mac Studio, MacBook Air, whatever you use. If it's a Mac, tick that box. The other one is a project setting that you need to make sure you change. Go to Settings, Color Management, and right here, remember we talked about this earlier? By default, this will be set to Rec 709 scene. You need to change this to Rec 709A. If you don't change that to A, that is likely going to be one of the big reasons that things look brighter or darker or whatever. It doesn't look the same as what you're editing. When you export it, if you don't check your export, you upload it to YouTube or wherever, you send it to people, it looks different. Why does it look brighter? That's why. So what about if you just want to use a different piece of editing software to cut, you need to do something really fast, you're very used to using that, and you just want to color in DaVinci because you want to take advantage of the powerful tools that it has. It's very easy to do. Let me show you how in Final Cut. So right here in Final Cut, I've got a set of clips here, which looks very similar to what we were already editing in Resolve, but I'm going to show you this as an example. We're going to export this as an XML file, which is basically like a just generic file that all editing software can read. This clip was cut here, it was put next to here, this clip was here, this cut was there. It reads all of that for you. In Final Cut to do that, go File, Export XML, put this wherever you want it to go, so let's call it Test, and you want to make sure you go with previous version 1.11, I find that works best for me. Definitely don't do current version, do previous version. Then save it. Now go back to Resolve, Let's just close all this down, close project. Let's create a brand new untitled project. We'll also call it test. And we're gonna go file, import, timeline. You see right here, test. You see how it's a readable file? We're gonna click enter. We're just gonna click enter here and be prepared for something to happen. It hasn't found the clips because I have them in a different folder. But we're gonna tell it where to find those clips. So this is in the Blazor Beetle. We're gonna click OK, and then we're gonna tell it to find them. And this will happen. It still hasn't found them. Do you wanna search? No. Okay, and it hasn't found the clips here. Now this typically will happen, and it's very easy to solve. All you need to do is drag in your original clips. So in this case, it's this one right here. I'm gonna drag this in, and it still hasn't found it. But if I right click this clip and go Clip Attributes, and I change the time code here, to, don't ask me why you have to do this. This is just the way it works. 0, 0, dot, 0, 0, dot, 0, 0, dot, 0, 0. Hit enter. Okay, and look at that. I have my entire timeline, minus one clip, which I didn't link up, so we'll just delete that. Well, we'll leave it there for now. I have my entire timeline from Final Cut, now in Resolve. What did that take, like less than a minute really if I wasn't explaining to you the process of doing it? And now I can go in and I can color grade everything in Resolve, export it, and if you wanna cut in one program, color in Resolve, you can do that really, really easily. Power Windows are what I would say the biggest eye-opener was for me because it's so quick and easy to use them, very easy to learn and it has a huge impact on the way your image looks, your video looks. Let me show you for example. So look at the window of the truck and I'm gonna disable this power window and you'll see it's basically overexposed. And all I've done here, there is apply a window to this. But let's delete this or reset it and I'll show you how quickly and easily you can apply something to this and then track it 
because obviously it's a video, it's not just a photo, so it applies to all the frames. And bear in mind, I'm still learning this. I know the basics, but I just wanna share with you someone that is likely going to be a basic user as well. So what we're gonna do is click on window right here, go linear, and we're just gonna add a real basic box. Uh, let's go back to like here. Uh, around this window. I'm not gonna cut in all the edges or anything like that. Yes, you could do this um, a lot more perfectly, but we're just doing a real basic example to show you here, just to wet your whistle of what's possible before you search a bazillion videos on power windows. Feather the edges here so it doesn't look horribly obvious. And then we're just gonna let Resolve track back and forth. And you do that by clicking right here. And we're gonna have all the axes enabled. And this one right here will track all the frames forward, all the frames back, and try and have that window stay and track everything. It's normally very, very accurate. So let's just see what it does. All the way forwards. Yep, all the way back. No problem whatsoever. And if you play that, you see that power window now kind of stays on the window. Now, this is where the fun part comes in. You go to HDR right here, high dynamic range color wheels. And this exposure meter here is really smart. Generally, when you use exposure in like Final Cut, it just does the whole image and it never looks great bringing up or bringing down the exposure as a whole. With Resolve, I find it's way better and it just looks way more natural. But what you can do here is bring down this and I've brought that down and now I can just play back this clip. Actually, there's a gap there. I could have feathered the edge of that a bit better. We can go, let's bring this up bit more and then let's retract that and now let's preview it yeah, see now it's done it much much better yeah so quick so easy to do with power windows and as I said I didn't track that dash properly but huge impact on the image let's do the before and the after so before after Hopefully this video helped you out. If you like this kind of thing, let me know down below. Happy to make some more. Thank you Blackmagic for actually sponsoring this video for making it entirely possible and kind of pushing me towards learning Resolve. I really do appreciate it. That is all I've got for you in this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.